en vivo por la plataforma YouTube. En vivo por la plataforma YouTube. We are safe. We are accountable. We are inclusive. We are learners. We sail. Um, before we get started, we're going to go ahead and just offer a message of interpretation. So, um, Frida. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Frida, and my colleague Viviana and myself will be your interpreters tonight. Buenos noches a todos y bienvenidos. Mi nombre es Frida. Mi colega Viviana y yo seremos sus intérpretes esta noche. I'll give this message both in English and in Spanish. Daré este mensaje tanto en inglés como en español. In order to provide language access, this meeting will have simultaneous bidirectional interpretation into English and Spanish. If you're bilingual, you don't have to click anything. But if you're not bilingual into English and Spanish, you'll You'll need to do the following. If you're on a laptop or a PC, locate the icon shaped like a globe at the bottom of your screen, select language interpretation, and then select English. If you're on an iPad or your phone or a similar device, then locate the three dot menu in the upper right corner of your screen, select language interpretation, and then select English. When you speak, do so at a moderate pace because the interpreter is going to be simultaneously interpreting everything you say. Esta reunión contará con interpretación bidireccional simultánea al inglés y al español. Si usted es bilingüe, no tiene que presionar nada. Pero si usted no es bilingüe, va a tener que hacer lo siguiente. Si usted está en una computadora, localice el icono en forma de globo que está en la parte inferior de su pantalla, haga clic en interpretación de idiomas y después seleccione español o Spanish. Si usted está en su teléfono, un iPad o un dispositivo similar, entonces localice el menú de tres puntos que está en la parte superior derecha de la pantalla, haga clic en interpretación de idiomas y después seleccione español o Spanish. Cuando hable, hágalo en español. El intérprete estará interpretando todo lo que usted diga simultáneamente al inglés. Antes de que me vaya, ¿alguien tiene alguna pregunta respecto a la interpretación? If Miss Ortega can please now assign me. Thank you. Okay, I will go ahead and assign you. Update. Perfect. Let me share my screen again. All right, uh, just a few more housekeeping uh, questions and answers. We do have a Q&A with this webinar. And so if you have a question, please type your question into the webinar Q&A. Our GB team will be behind the scenes answering your question, reviewing your questions, and we'll try to answer them as best as we can throughout the webinar. Any questions we don't answer throughout the webinar, we'll go ahead and follow up with you after the webinar. All right, well, welcome to Goleta Valley Junior High School uh, to our first ever Zoom open house. And so uh, before we get started, uh, I wanna go ahead and uh, 
introduce you to our Sergeant at Arms, Sophia Pixley, who will lead us in the flag salute. Sophia. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Place your right hand over your heart and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. All right, and before we get started, I do wanna take this opportunity to welcome our distinguished guests. And so uh, we are so fortunate to have our Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education, uh, Ms. Sean Carey. So Ms. Sean Carey, will you say a few words and hello, please? Good evening, Mariners. Buenas tardes, marineros. <laughs> Um, I just am pleased to be here. Uh, I have so much uh, appreciation for the staff and the student body and the families at GV who make it such a special place. Um, I know you don't want to hear from me and you want to hear from all of them. So I'm just uh, grateful to be a part of tonight's event. And I'm grateful to all of you for showing up and for being adaptable in this uh, in this challenging year that we're all having together. But tonight's exciting because we're really talking about looking forward toward next year. And that just fills me uh, with, with positive energy. So thanks for having me and have a great night, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Carey. Um, I do wanna also recognize uh, two more distinguished guests here with us today. And that is Ms. Amy Marston, who is our PTA uh, member who also oversees hospitality. So you'll have an opportunity to hear from her later on in the presentation. Um, and also Ms. Anaí Hernández, who is our ELAC president. Um, la señora Anaí Hernández está aquí con nosotros también. Va a tener la oportunidad de escuchar de ella más tarde. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and uh, get started. And uh, as we get started, I, I, I want to take this opportunity to just introduce a little promo video from uh, Nicest Kids on Zoom. It's from God Broadway. Uh, Ms. Ross, uh, led from Ms. Ross, she's currently working with uh, our performing arts theater arts crew uh, to produce this. And so let me just go ahead and take a few moments to uh, play this promo video for you all. Welcome to the GVJH Performing Arts Class at Broadway 2020. Sit down, kick your feet up, and enjoy the show. Oh, every afternoon when your clock strikes four. A crazy bunch of kids crash through that door, yeah. Well, we throw up our coats and leave the squares behind, and then we shake it, shake it, shake it, like we're losing our mind. Yeah. 
Awesome. I got to make sure my slide deck. Perfect. So um, one of the things I love about open house back to school night and all events that we do in the auditorium is that we always have an opportunity to enjoy performing arts and our music productions. And um, we really think even in this pandemic, social distancing, distance learning, uh, we really get into the mindset of what can we do rather than trying to replicate something about um, we really try to think about what can we do now in this current condition. Um, certainly our time today is to talk about going back um, and seeing what we will continue to do, um, but even better as we return from quarantining, as we return from this current distance learning, eventually to hybrid learning and back to brick and mortar. So with that, I want to introduce our team. Uh, we have um, starting with myself, Principal Ortega, Maurice Ortega, but I also want to introduce Ms. Chu. Uh, she is our assistant principal overseeing curriculum and instruction, special education, um, and many of the areas here at our school. Ms. Chu, a few words. Yes, hello everybody. Welcome to our open house. And even though this is a very different format, we are very happy to have you and glad that you're able to take time to join us tonight. So thank you. Great, right. Mr. Sportel. Just want to thank you for coming out tonight and uh, you are the most important people in our school, our students, our families. So thank you again for coming out and joining us. Great, thank you. And also our counseling team is here uh, joining us. They have a small presentation for you um, soon enough in a few slides, uh, but we have Ms. Cabrera, Ms. Ricardo and Ms. Uh, DeCarmo. And so all three of these uh, counselors help us create our comprehensive school counseling program. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that and what that looks like. Um, but it's, uh, we are just proud of the work that they are doing uh, to support all students. Also, um, I wanted to connect you to two individuals that will help you through the enrollment process and even registration process as we um, go through the end of the school year, through the summer and the beginning of next school year. And so Ms. Spencer, uh, she is our registrar and also our counseling secretary. And her role is really to help you with collecting birth certificates, to collect paperwork, uh, copies of passports, uh, address verification. Ms. Cunningham, her role, primary role will function uh, through the enrollment process to really look at the immunizations. And uh, within that, it, it is a year long process for us to collect that data. Uh, but really important because it does allow our students to start a smooth school year. So I wanted to put a picture to them so that way you know who to contact, um, but you'll be seeing a lot of information coming their way. Uh, we'll be pushing more information out to the feeder schools and also putting it on our website um, in terms of what documents and the process that you will go through to get the enrollment process completed. So, um, this slide really talks about who we are, what we do, why we do it, and currently the work that we do throughout the year. Uh, at the core here is preparing students for a world that is yet to be created. And so for us, we went through this process of why we do this work, why do we exist? And at the core of what we do is to ensure safety, to ensure accountability, uh, to be inclusive, and uh, learning. And so that does spell an acronym for us, SAIL. Uh, we are the Mariners. Uh, we also have an anchor that grounds us. We have a galleon that navigates us. Um, and so we do go through these nautical themes, um, but it's also the themes that create a culture here at a school. And when you think about culture, it's the traditions, it's the customs, it's the language. Um, it's the environment, the geography, all of that creates a culture. And uh, we are really proud of the culture that we have created here at GV. Uh, it is why we call ourselves the Mariners. Um, and grounded in that is our vision. Our vision is that all Goleta Valley Junior High Mariners will be engaged learners. Uh, engaged is such a powerful wor word. Uh, it really means a lot to us. And we think about engagement all the time. Even as we're thinking about it right now, what does engagement mean for students who uh, have to log into Zoom, but also have to meet the needs of their families and at the same time stay involved? 
uh, culturally aware? Um, what does that mean in terms of their inclusivity and how they function at school um, and how they can produce and also articulate and critically think on important topics that we go over uh, related to our common core standards, but also the skills that are embedded in those standards. Uh, productive citizens in the 21st century global community. Uh, for, by 21st century, you know, we think about what are those 21st century skills of collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, uh, communication. And so um, we take a lot of pride in this work and, and is one that we believe will create a student profile. Um, and I'll go ahead and have Mr. Sportel speak about our values, the behaviors that we instill in our students. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Uh, as Mariners, we focus our energy on the values that you see listed here. And we reinforce and refine these values in all of our learning and we infuse them into everything we do. And we not only strive to exemplify these values in our own actions, but just as importantly, we express appreciation when we see them in others. So when we reflect on respect, we're really looking at that aspect that relates to the withholding of our own judgment that allows us to be excellent listeners. And we strive to be innovative, and certainly in the demonstration of our own learning, but also in the ways that we interact with each other and, and with our community. The lifelong learning, it's the mindset that guides our own self-image. As curious human beings, we're continually reaching to improve our understanding of that greater world around us. We set and achieve goals because it's inherent to all success. And it grows and nourishes our self-confidence and our, our belief in our own e efficacy. Um, finally, uh, we endeavor to exemplify the value of equity because we recognize that today's student mariners are the ones who are going to create our future. So one of the strategies that we utilize to focus on these value concepts is all of our work around higher order thinking. And I'll have um, Mrs. Chu would like to explain that a little bit more. Thank you, Mr. Sportel. So yes, um, our goal at Goleta Valley is higher order thinking. And when we, we speak to a goal, really we're talking about an end outcome, um, something that we're using to focus on and to direct our efforts. And so that's where we land with higher order thinking. And it really helps us uh, as a staff, us meaning those of us as uh, administrators, our counselors, our support staff, and most especially together to design and implement learning experiences for every single one of our students that are going to enable them to uh, grow and achieve skills that will enable them to be successful in high school and beyond high school. We get them for two short years, but we lay some critical foundational pieces for them as they prepare for high school. And so these higher order thinking is really about uh, being intentional with our learning experiences where students can not only learn content, but that they're learning the other skills that go with it, the collaboration, the communication piece, and things such as the habits of a learner. We want them to be able to persevere, to self-advocate for themselves. So all of that gets um, encapsulated in this goal of ours that really drives our work and helps us maintain focus. Great, thank you, Ms. Chu. And uh, I just wanna reiterate that this is not a fixed uh, framework that we have here at GV. We constantly look at it, we review it, we revise it, we go through our cycles. And if we see a change, we make it, uh, but we make it in a way that's going to benefit our students. Uh, and so that's always the intention um, with the framework that we're sharing with you here. Great. Um, at the heart of everything, uh, I just came from a, a leadership meeting today and I just shared that, you know, how do we connect with students and it's relationships. Uh, at, the, at the front of what we do, we wanna be able to authentically connect with students uh, to not judge them, uh, but really to understand how we can support them. Um, and we have the school-wide expectations around safe, accountable, inclusive learners. We will be sharing those more in detail when we get to back to school night. Um, but I did have a, a video TV production class share a video with me today that I'll play for you all in regards to how they feel about safe, accountable, inclusive learners. 
Meet Kalita Valley Junior High, where dreams become a reality. We sail to success by being safe, accountable, inclusive learners. Students love Kalita Valley for... My favorite thing about Kalita Valley is the teachers. Everyone is so accepting and welcome. Everyone at Kalita Valley is accepted and welcomed into our community. to success i'm just uh you know we're just fortunate to have a video tv production here at school that can produce its own um videos for you all and so more to come on that one as mr gorley uh will share some more about video tv production um i want to send it off now to talk a little bit about campus culture um what you see here are clubs that we offer here at gv uh, and their current clubs. So, um, but with that, I'll go ahead and uh, pass it over to our ASB president, Andy Brennan, who has a few words to share. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Andy Brennan, and I'm the ASB president at GV. Um, I'm an eighth grader, meaning that I will be at Dos Pueblos next year, but it also means that I was able to experience school on campus. I can safely say that our staff has done an amazing job at communicating with students and making sure we have a similar learning experience to a non-COVID year. Uh, students, if you participate in AF ASB, have a big impact on communicating with the school and how we celebrate our sale values. I find ASB's club program very impactful. If you find something you're passionate about, the teachers are very willing to help you set up a club for it. The club committee within ASB helps communicate with the club officers. And in this virtual environment, we have managed to keep clubs going. Uh, I ran for ASB president because I knew that I loved helping our school. I got to lead meetings and talk with people like Ms. Vaccaro and Ms. Hatterday, which taught me to better lead and continue growing uh, Glita Valley. I'm so thankful for, for choosing to go to GV because I've made wonderful friends and grown as an individual. Um, I thank you for coming and I would encourage you all to be a part of ASB, even if all you do is show up. Thank you so much, Andy. And I wanna reiterate on what he said at the very end. All you need to do as a student coming in as a seventh grader is just show up to our meetings. Uh, learn the tricks of the trade, learn the leadership skills that we work on with our kids. And then by the time they get into the spring, then they start running for a position, for an officer position, and then they get ready to lead. And uh, we really take the leadership of ASB seriously. Uh, we empower them to really work with the funding that they want to develop and create, uh, but also a process of clubs and creating those clubs. And so the clubs you see here are the current clubs that we're currently running under distance learning conditions. Um, and um, at the end of this, every single year, we go through the cycle of developing new clubs. So thank you once again, Andy. All right, um, I want to transition us into the required coursework that you're all going to see as your kids go into course selection. So I'm gonna skim through these and then I'll have our teachers really dive deeper into the subjects. Uh, the required coursework for seventh grade is four core subjects, including in physical education. So that's five in an elective class. And it goes the same with eighth grade. Um, I did put PE as an asterisk at the bottom for anyone interested in independent PE. The deadline is March 1st and students must apply annually. And so um, there is information on our district website in regards to the application process, uh, but I wanted to include it in here just so you're aware that the deadline is approaching and it does come rather quickly. So if you're considering that one, um, do take time to go into the district website to locate the application. The coursework that you're seeing here are 
also offered in college prep and honors. And so um, in English, science and social studies, we do have college prep and honors being offered. Uh, our counselors will work and use the information for student placement to guide conversations around appropriate placements. I did put in bold here that the final decision on whether a student takes advanced coursework is a decision between you, uh, the parent and the student. And so um, you do wanna have conversations about that because we do wanna find the appropriate placement for a student uh, and just make sure that they're, we're able to meet their needs. So I put in here just cast data. Uh, we are going to be looking at CAST data, but we'll also be looking at just how kids are doing in their classes and their grades as well. We also look, look at STAR ELA Lexile uh, data, which is in a, a reading proficiency uh, measurement to see where the kids are doing with their grade level reading. With math, it's, uh, uh, we offer three different areas, including support. And so uh, we look at the grade report from the prior year. We do offer college prep, uh, enrichment and compaction and mass support. Uh, Ms. McLean uh, will be here just kind of explaining and diving deeper into this uh, offering, uh, but this is what we're offering for next school year. Um, I'll also talk about electives, but before I get to that, I do want to start introducing the various different types of programs that we have here at GV. Um, I'll start with the library, then we'll get into the counseling uh, department. So Ms. Hatchaday. Thank you and hello everyone. Welcome. I'm Ms. Hatcherday. I'm the teacher librarian. I'm also involved with the ASB club and the yearbook club and I love being able to host clubs in our library space. The library space is made up of our print library materials, our virtual library space, our website with our digital um, databases, and then our maker space. And I added this photo to the slide to um, show that even though most people when they think about a library think of our awesome books on our shelves, we also have a maker space that's home to our 3D printer, our craft materials, and our audiovisual equipment that you see the students using in this photograph. And it's a really special place that promotes curiosity and collaboration. And when it comes to the print and tech materials, the library supports each academic discipline. For example, the library supports our English language arts independent reading program, which you'll hear about more later, I'm sure. And um, we work really hard to collect data with students on the students' interests and needs so that we have materials um, that motivate every reader and represent our school's cultural and linguistic excellence. Um, and you may not know this, but GVJH is home to the largest collection of graphic novels and manga in all of Santa Barbara and Goleta. So if those interest you, you may wanna check those out while you're at GV and those become part of our programs. And if you wanna learn more about our programs like our meet the author visit, and we just had a meet the author visit with a graphic novelist, you can visit our website. It's got all the information on our print, digital um, and makerspace materials. So thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Hatchaday. All right, and next I have our counselors. So we'll start with Ms. Cabrera and Ms. Ricardo. Yes, um, hello everyone. I'm Ms. Ricardo. I'm one of the school counselors. Um, just a little bit of information from our counseling department. So we have two school counselors and each student will be assigned to a counselor according to their last name. Um, I am the second half of the alphabet, and Ms. Cabrera is the first half of the alphabet. So we are two adults, two um, additional um, uh, people that will serve and help your student. Um, both Ms. Cabrera and myself are looking forward in meeting you and assisting your student um, with the transition from elementary um, to junior high. Next slide. And good evening, everyone. Buenas noches a todos. I'm Ms. Cabrera, 
And as school counselors, we are passionate about serving all students. And this happens across three domains, uh, academic, college and career, and social emotional. This is a glimpse of our virtual counseling office. Um, you know, we wanted to give students an opportunity to, even in uh, distance learning, access all the resources that our counseling program has to offer. And while we're currently serving uh, students remotely, we look forward to seeing you and your students in person sooner than later. Um, one important announcement that we have is that every year we connect with your students' elementary school to facilitate junior high course selection. So this happens towards the end of January. Um, so more information to come on that, but just wanted to um, make note of that right now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rivera. And shifting it over, um, I want to talk a little bit about parent engagement opportunities, uh, but also to let you know that as we you are shifting from elementary to junior high, parent engagement just becomes a lot easier, but way more important and extremely essential. And so think about what I just said there, it becomes easier. That means I'm encouraging you to join PTA, School Site Council, uh, CPAC, ELAC. Uh, becomes way more essential. That means your kids, your children need you now more than ever. Uh, junior high is not the time to let our kids run loose. Um, it is a time to really get closer, build better relationships, get to know students, uh, and see how you can support them. And so I'll start first by introducing um, our PTA of Hospitality, Ms. Amy Marston. Uh, on here, I have the email of Ms. Tina Brenza. She is our Coleta Valley Junior High PTA president. And so we'll be sending out more information later on in terms of how you can take part in parent involvement opportunities. Uh, but I'll turn it over to Ms. Marston real quick. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, as Mauricio said, as Mr. Ortega said, it gets much easier. If you've arrived here, burnt out from elementary school PTA, I can promise you it's a lot less demanding. Um, there's, everyone is either new or graduating unless you happen to be here with your second child. So you, there isn't a level of familiarity that you have to have to jump in. I just encourage you to show up to come to the meetings, um, to join the coffee with the principal. Um, the PTA does important work at funding teacher grants, our reflections program. Uh, we have four association meetings a year and we usually try to provide uh, valuable guest speakers. And then we um, focus our energies on supporting the maker space in the library. So we request that you become a member and then involve yourself at whatever degree you feel comfortable, but um, we just welcome you and it uh, makes a difference. Thank you. Great, thank you, Ms. Marston. Um, and also right now, I just wanna take a moment to introduce our uh, English Learner Advisory Committee, Ms. Anaí Hernández, uh, es nuestra presidente aquí de ILAC. So, un momento, señora Hernández, si puede hacer unas palabras de ILAC. Well, if Ms. Hernández can't hear us. Right disculpe. <laughs> Es que me había salido. No, no hay problema. Este, um, mi nombre es Anaí. Este, soy la presidenta de, uh, de ILA. Este, uh, me da mucho gusto tenerlos aquí. Pues bienvenidos. Uh, yo también pues soy nueva en esto. Estoy aprendiendo. Este, pero los invitamos a que formen parte de esta asociación, bueno, de ILA. Es uh, muy bueno para nosotros como padres involucrarnos más con uh, las cosas de nuestros hijos. Uh, y pues aquí tenemos muchas oportunidades de ayudar a nuestros hijos y a los demás padres también. Uh, pues bienvenidos y aquí los esperamos ver de nuevo. Gracias. 
Muchas gracias, señora Hernández. Um, es un buen comité, so los animos a todos que, que están con nosotros. Uh, please join us with the ELAC, uh, this is Emergent Multilingual Students. And uh, it just, uh, part of our, our goal and our mission of being inclusive and including and supporting all students. Uh, next, I'll have Ms. Chu talk a little bit about our CPAC committee. Thank you again, Mr. Ortega. Um, yes, as we look towards the next two years when your children will be coming to us at GV, we really want to encourage just an ongoing team effort. And so that's where it becomes really important in all these parent engagement opportunities. We encourage you as parents to take part in those. And so specifically for those of you who are parents of students in um, any of our special education programs, which you will hear about in just a minute, we have a committee. It's a sh the shortened name is CPAC, but it stands for our Staff spe Special Education Parent Advisory Committee. And really, this is an opportunity where we come together. We, meaning on the educational side, it is myself as the assistant principal who oversees all of our special education programs, our department chair of our special education department, Ms. Cruz, who you will hear from in a minute, um, and often many other staff members or guest uh, speakers that come to our meetings. We have these meetings together with you as parents of students in any of our special education programs. And it really is a way for us to get together in a smaller environment. We meet four times a year, once each quarter. And we often have special topics that we share information on, we discuss together. It's a way to hear your um, questions, concerns, things that we can address. So we really encourage you to participate in that. We always send out information so you'll know when those meetings are. And we also look for several representatives to be a CPAC representative for GV with our district. Um, they also have meetings what once a quarter so that we can be a part of that special education community district-wide. And those representatives will be bring information back to this uh, committee as well. So again, we invite you if you have a student in any of our special education programs, this is a great way for us to be connected. Thank you, Ms. Chu. All right, so uh, now we'll go ahead and hear a little bit from our special education department chair, uh, Ms. Amy Cruz. Good evening, um, parents and all attendees, and welcome to Goleta Valley. I am Amy Cruz, and I'm here representing the special education department. Um, as you can see that we're a large team, um, and let me briefly introduce you. You can see my picture here, Amy Cruz. We also have Wendy Newhouse, uh, Jody Stevens, Jean Mogia, Paul Lozano, Lauren Rasmussen, Cameron Stewart, and Rose Tafoya. Next slide. So we offer uh, uh, several layers of support for students with IEPs at Goleta Valley Junior High. And um, one thing I wanna remind you of, if you are a parent of a student with an IEP, we will have transition meetings in the spring in which we will go much further in depth into these programs with you and create an individual education plan. So just to remind you, I know you'll probably have a lot of questions. We can answer a lot of those at the transition meeting um, as well as tonight. Um, but briefly, uh, we have our mild to moderate program, which includes myself, Jody Stevens and Wendy Newhouse. And that um, in students with mild moderate disabilities, we we go into the general education setting. Uh, it's a, we like to call it a collaborative teaching model. We also do some support classes and some small group pullouts. And then we have our moderate severe special day class with Cameron Stewart, uh, which is a separate classroom and, and with extra supports for with paraeducators for our students with social, uh, academic, behavioral and emotional goals. Um, we also have Miss Rose Tafoya, who uh, heads our regional special day class, which is a um, classroom on campus that um, serves our students with significant academic, physical, um, physical mobility and health needs. 
And then we have our therapeutic learning program with Jean Mogia um, that serves students uh, throughout our school with IEPs with their behavior and emotional needs. And then we have uh, additional supports like our speech and language teacher and our school psychologist who provides uh, special education assessment as well as related services for our students. So we welcome you. And if you have any questions, you can put it in chat. And additionally, we will see you this spring when we have transition IEPs, but welcome. Great, thank you, Ms. Cruz. All right, and now I'll go ahead and uh, send it over to Ms. Christine McLean. Good evening. I'm so glad to see all of you here and be able to give you some information about our math department. But first, I want to show you our incredible math team here at GV. We have Lindsay Coakley, Emily Cottrell, Jeanette Peinado, Nate Thompson, Kalea Wright, and myself, Christine McLean. And I just want you to know that here at GV, we are excited to be working with your incoming students. We know that math might be one of those areas that you're a little worried or concerned about, especially going through this pandemic and the distant learning that's occurring, but you can be assured we want to meet your students where they are and help them grow successfully. As you can see, we have all of our classes that are aligned with the national and state standards. We have a wonderful seventh and eighth grade program consisting of our college prep, our enrichment, which is like honors for those that are at or exceeding standards that want that depth and complexity to create a solid foundation. And we even have a support class for those who need that little bit of extra help to fill in those holes in the understanding. We do offer compaction for those students that are accelerated, have those solid work habits and a desire for a fast paced course. We kind of say this program is for those students that love math, can't get enough of it, and they don't mind putting in that extra work, including on their breaks. It is actually a course that covers a year and a half in just one year. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the administration, counselors, or myself. And we really are looking forward to meeting you and your students in the fall in person. And we wanna make sure that we make math enjoyable for everyone and make them as successful as possible. Thank you, Ms. McLean. You're welcome. And introducing now Ms. Ferrer, who will talk to us about English language arts. Good evening, students and families, teacher mariners. I am Jan Ferrer. I am an English 7 teacher, and I teach AVID as well. I have the opportunity to work with a wonderful team, Nancy Math. Karen Polinski, Carolyn Ross, Justina Weinbender, Katrina Peoples, Bridget Sandoval. And as Amy Cruz mentioned earlier, we also have additional support from Amy Cruz and Jody Stevens in our English classes as well. In English, we focus on the Common Core State Standards in English Language Arts, and we do a very structured writing program where we focus quarterly on narrative expository, argument, and creative writing. Additionally, we have English support classes as well as English language development classes, which are additional courses designed to support our emergent bilingual Great, thank you, Ms. Ferrer. And next we'll go ahead and uh, send it over to Mr. Rocha for social studies. Hello, thank you all for joining us this evening. I'm Sean Rocha, I teach seventh grade social studies at GV, along with my colleagues you see here on our slide. At the junior high level, students focus on US history in eighth grade and world history social studies in seventh. Uh, we refer to seventh grade curriculum as social studies because we're not only looking at the events of the past, but also the social and cultural events, geogra geographical changes and impacts that took place over time. During seventh grade, we mainly cover the time periods of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance throughout the different regions of the world. At GV, one of our main goals in our history classes is to use the content as a vehicle to also drive skills that will help make our students successful lifelong learners across all subjects. We focus on skills such as summarization, image and text analysis, annotating text, writing like a historian, 
and cognitive reading strategies. So far this year, uh, our seventh grade classes have covered the fall of Rome, the civilizations of the Americas and aspects of the Middle Ages, while also discussing concepts like ge geography, power, empire, civilizations, and much more already. Um, so I hope I've made you as excited about history as I am, and I look forward to having your student join our Mariner family. Thank you, Mr. Rocha. And now we'll go ahead and send it over to Mr. Moore. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm super excited to have uh, your students join us at uh, GV for Science. As you can see from a year or two back, we have a very engaging program here for both seventh and eighth graders to really get uh, their hands into science. And uh, if you show us the next slide, I'll introduce you to our staff here. Uh, myself in the top corner, Mr. Moore, uh, and my colleagues, Ron Pinate, Brad Pincala, Courtney Vaquero, and James Jackson are here to serve you and uh, offer an exciting and really um, powerful program that we're really proud of. Uh, course overview, both seventh and eighth grade science programs are designed around the next generation science standards, NGSS. So that's a national uh, standards that was recently revised that integrates physical life, earth sciences, along with engineering practices. And so what's really exciting about these new standards is science is taught through the uh, students actually um, pursuing scientific activities for themselves, getting their hands on and actually engaging in real science activities that are relevant to current events and their life. Uh, seventh grade science in particular, uh, the students explore a wide range of fundamental concepts from basic chemistry, matter and energy flow in organisms, ecosystems, geoscience processes, and environmental issues. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Moore. Uh, next, we have Mr. Lee Speshak talking about physical education and after school sports. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, here's our, our PE team uh, going on 20 years together. Uh, Ms. McCall and I, Amy McConnell, teach seventh grade, and Chris Hughes and Mary Ellen Brown teach eighth grade. Uh, some of the curriculum uh, in seventh grade. We're typically talking about social skills and skill development. Uh, we do that through more individual sports. In eighth grade, they're talking more about team building and how to work together as a team, which is really being missed right now. Uh, so they're playing more of the traditional sports like basketball, volleyball, soccer, uh, team handball. We also wrap up with track and field. Uh, so that's a, a big unit and a big part of what the kids can do moving into high school. Uh, I did, I skipped seventh grade. Seventh grade, we're doing um, skill-based things, but we also try to throw in some individual sports like spike ball and pickleball, uh, dance unit, and some other things to uh, keep them going. We also uh, spend 50% of our time working on physical fitness and heart rate, healthy heart type activities. After School Sports is a free program that we offer that we uh, have about four rounds, four sessions of throughout the school year. Uh, it's a free program. We'll talk to the kids about it. We have boys and girls basketball, uh, co-ed volleyball. We have a game club, uh, boys and girls soccer as well, oh, and cross country. So uh, we look forward to having all of your students and seeing them learn and grow and uh, be future Mariners. Great, thank you, Mr. Special. All right, and uh, next I'm going to go ahead and introduce some guests to really talk about our electives. And uh, right now I'm just giving you a, a, just a survey of all the electives that we offer. Our counselors are gonna go over with our students these electives so that way they can understand uh, what the course selection will look like. Uh, some of them are combos. And so the combos are industrial technology combos. So you got visual art and industrial technology, music and industrial technology, theater arts and industrial technology. Others are year long, like advanced band, AVID, orchestra, beginning band, beginning coding, 
uh, course and Spanish. Uh, we also offer intro to video and TV production, which is a year long seventh and eighth one class. And so some of them do have an asterisk, which means they do require uh, students to connect with the teachers and get counselor approval. We will guide students through that process and also guide parents through that process. Very similar offering in elective and eighth grade. The only difference is that the combos are not offered in eighth grade. The combos are primarily offered in seventh grade. So that way students have uh, options to see where they wanna dive deeper into an elective. So with that, I will start with Ms. Diana Hemsley who will talk about art. Hi everybody and good evening. My name is Diana Hemsley and I'm the art teacher here at Goleta Valley Junior High School. Go ahead, next slide. Um, so the class is basically set up for students of all levels of art history, uh, past you know, experience in their history of taking classes or taking lessons. So we really wanna make sure that everybody understands that the class is available to students that are beginners from advanced. Um, we're really focusing the class on learning about how to be creative people and how to transfer that to other aspects of their lives. So how do we teach them problem solving skills throughout the creative process? Next slide. So the way that we do that is we're teaching them really about visual literacy. What does it mean to look at a piece of art or create something or design something or engineer something and know exactly what the intention of that product is? Well, we do that by teaching students literacy in the arts. So students are gonna be learning about all those things you can see there, texture, movement, unity, space, color, and everything that goes into that. Next slide. Um, one of the aspects of learning literacy is also about understanding what it means to use the color wheel and color theory and how to do that with intention as well. And when we talk about intention, what we're really doing is just like with reading or math or science or anything, we're giving kids the skills that they need to create imagery, advertisement, artwork that sends a message that speaks to people and that is expressive and unique to their own inner being. Next slide. Some of the ways we go about uh, expressing those things are through two-dimensional art. So we're gonna be, I, I'm one of those kind of people that like to put a lot of things in their hands. If I can get a hold of it, we're gonna try using it to create something. So some of the things we do, of course, are paint, uh, tempera, acrylic, watercolor, also pencils, colored pencils, graphite. Uh, we just got a grant for a new printing press. So we're gonna be doing some printing. Um, next slide, we also delve into three-dimensional art. So students are gonna be learning how to build things in the round and how to sculpt. Um, some of the things we're doing right now, even with, with everything being distance, kids are gonna be doing a jewelry unit, learning how to make some necklaces and beads. We're doing some cardboard sculptures. Uh, they're using wire this year. So there's a lot of things that we have available for them to express themselves through the three-dimensional world as well. Next slide. So that's in my presentation. What I'd like to say is sign up for art. Uh, I love teaching art. I love just the way that kids express themselves. I love the uniqueness of how every single kid comes up with their own solution to these creative problems. So send your kids our way and we'll just have a love fest. We'll just do it. We'll do it in the art room. Thank All you. Right, guys. Have a great Next, I'll go ahead and introduce Mr. Rocha, who will talk about AVID. Hello again, Sean Rocha. Uh, so along with social studies, I am also the AVID coordinator and teach AVID 7, um, along with Jan Ferrer and Diana Hemsley, who teaches AVID 8. So AVID, which stands for Advancement Via Individual Determination, is an elective class that focuses on just that, taking that student who's already individually determined to work hard and succeed in their learning, and we support them with the skills, experiences, uh, and exposure to a variety of new opportunities to help them achieve their goals. Uh, students are enrolled in their school's most challenging classes, but also in the AVID elective for both seventh and eighth grade. For one period a day, AVID students learn organizational skills, study skills, they work on critical thinking and how to ask probing questions. They get academic help from peers and college tutors that volunteer and participate in enrichment and motivational activities um, that ensure the college path is, an atta is attainable for them. 
If your student is interested in, in the AVID elective, please have them ask their teacher for more information as they start um, signing up for their courses and to look out for our AVID application that's coming up um, in late January. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rocha. Next up, we have Ms. Nelson. Greetings, incoming Mariner families. My name is Devin Nelson, and I am the instrumental music teacher here at Goleta Valley. I have been playing music since I was in fourth grade, and I am excited to pass on a passion for music to your students. We develop collaboration skills, creative thinking, and social skills while playing instruments to express ourselves and make music together. Playing an instrument is really good for your brain. At Goleta Valley, we have four instrumental elective music classes. Beginning band is for students who would like to play a band instrument but haven't played an instrument before. And beginning band is also for students who really love playing their instrument and they wanna learn another one. <laughs> um, so that would be uh, also for beginning band for those kinds of students. Uh, beginning band does meet during the school day. And uh, advanced band is for students who have one year or more of experience on their band instrument. Uh, jazz band is an auditioned group that is part of the advanced band. So if you wanna be in jazz band, you'd sign up for advanced band, which meets zero period. So, hey, you could be in advanced band and also take art or another elective during the school day. So advanced band is a zero period class before the school day. Orchestra class is for students who would like to play a string instrument. We ask for one year of prior experience on a string instrument, but if your student is determined, they can progress quickly because we play every day. Orchestra class does meet for the full year during the school day. And lastly, we have introduction to music. This semester class during the school day is a great way for students to try out music to see if it would be a good fit for them. And now we can go to the next slide. And these are the band instruments. So we have um, our woodwinds, flute, oboe, clarinet, saxophone, and our brass, trumpet, French horn, trombone, and tuba. And then we also have our percussion instruments. And so that includes um, our drums, snare drum, drum line, uh, but also marimba and all the other um, fun instruments that percussion can, gets to play. And next slide. And these are our orchestra instruments. So uh, all of our orchestra instruments are the ones that have the strings. So violin, viola, cello, and bass. And uh, one of the great things about our instrumental music program is that we have all the instruments, all the music, all the supplies, it's all free for your students. And uh, we will provide everything. You don't need to rent an instrument. We have everything uh, for available for you. And I think I have a contact slide. I'm not sure if I did another, um, no, okay. So uh, my email is, uh, you can contact me by email. You can also, there, yeah, there's my email. Um, you can also, uh, if you have any questions, type it in the chat and I would be happy to um, uh, answer any questions that you have about instrumental music. Great, thank you, Ms. Nelson. Next we have Ms. Ross. Hi everybody and welcome to, uh, to the GV community. I'm here to talk a little bit about theater arts. You saw an example of this year's uh, theater classes doing a little teaser for our Got Broadway production. That's our fall show every year and this year it's the same, just virtual. Um, and go ahead to the next slide. You'll get to see some of the kids in action. Uh, so theater arts is very active. We're dancing, they're dancing even at home right now twice a week. Um, you see some kids acting in the center there. They're creative every day and they're collaborative. They work together on every single project that they do. Uh, go ahead forward. And, you know, I love theater because it brings together so many wonderful skills, the physical, the artistic, the literacy skills. And it also, um, as you can see here, builds self-confidence. A lot of kids come in very shy or unsure about performing and because we do everything together they gain that confidence they also gain problem solving skills communication skills taking on challenges directing their own learning and this is a, a little snapshot from one of our previous productions when we were on stage <laughs> go ahead forward 
So we really are, I, you know, one of my cornerstones of the theater program is that we are a community and so um, I would love to have your student join. We have a, as Mr. Ortega mentioned, we have a half year for seventh graders, which is the theater arts combo. We also this year have a full year that seventh graders are able to take, which is a musical theater class. And every year it's a little different. Um, this year we also are so, so happy to have a seventh period class uh, for those who um, maybe have another elective during the day, a support class, an AVID class they can take a seventh period class. And some years we also offer chorus. It kind of depends on what you all put on your elective cards. So write down your interests and we will try to meet them. Go ahead forward. So uh, we have a website on the gvjh.sbunified uh, website and we're under academic departments in theater. So you can check it out, see more of what we have to offer. There's a place where you can add yourself to receive updates about theater events and performances, including our upcoming event, Got Broadway, which is going to premiere tomorrow evening. And then I will make the link available as long as it all works uh, after that so that the larger community can see the rest of the show that you saw that uh, little sh uh, snippet of the opening number. And actually that is the singing and dancing. And there's also a lot of acting kind of pieced in throughout. So uh, I hope you'll contact me, C. Ross, and uh, at SB Unified and get on our mailing list and see what we have to offer. Thanks for coming. Great, thank you, Ms. Ross. For everyone, we're on the home stretch. We have world language and industrial technology. So let's start with Ms. Clark, please. And, uh, Bonsoir tout le monde. Et uh, je suis le professeur de français ici à Golida Valley. Buenas tardes. Soy la profesora de, espa de español de francés. Uh, good evening. I'm happy to be the French teacher here at Golida Valley. Um, one reason for this is because I think it's amazing to have a school, a junior high, that supports two world languages. Not every school has languages to begin with. I didn't get to start until high school and our school ha supports two. So um, I think that's really uh, phenomenal and a great opportunity for your students to get started on their uh, pathway to being a global citizen. Um, currently, French is offered for eighth grade students, and but I am hoping that with interest that might be able to expand. Students that are um, that take French tend to be those that are very curious about kind of the world beyond what they know. They want to be able to travel. They want to be able to speak to the people that they meet as they go. And um, many of my students also speak two languages already. They are getting ready to be multilingual, which is quite an accomplishment to think about that for junior high students. I'm happy to be able to introduce my wonderful colleague, la professeure de espagnol, um, and Juliette Clark Ruiz. Merci. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hola y bienvenidos, alumnos y familias de sexto grado. Uh, for some of you, this is the first time you can take a language class. And uh, yo soy la señora Julieta Clark Ruiz, and, and I'm the teacher of Spanish 1 and Spanish 2. So you can take it as a 7th grade Spanish 1, and then as an 8th grader Spanish 2, and then continue. And then the nice thing is, is in our district, we have what's called the bilingual seal of uh, literacy that you can have on your diploma when you graduate. So it takes you on the track to becoming truly bilingual or multilingual uh, eventually. And that, and uh, you can start it here at Goleta Valley Junior High. We have a full two-year program and it's online and it's also in person. And when it's in person, it's magical. We have so many wonderful projects that we do. And um, there's so many reasons to become bilingual or multilingual. I have a student who speaks four languages right now. This is her fifth. And uh, it's so exciting to hear the development when they come in speaking absolutely no Spanish at all to becoming after a year or two years actually bilingual. Um, one of the reasons that you wanna learn is to make connections to other people, to learn about other cultures, to develop your career. If you were to be a doctor, lawyer, any kind of career needs uh, many languages. Um, learning about your family, being able to speak to your family. Um, also um, making friends and being a linguistic ambassador 
in the world. I think that's the biggest gift. So if you're thinking about language, we have French, we have Spanish, and it is a wonderful program and it's a community. We are a true community in our classrooms. Bienvenidos. Thank you, Ms. Clark Reese. And De nada. All right, next we go with Mr. Gorley. Hi, yeah. good evening. Nice to see you all. Uh, Mr. Moore and myself, we both teach industrial technology. I also teach uh, video as well, video productions. And I put together a short, although it's a little longer than I'd hoped, a little video. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, and here it is. Try that again. Uh, maybe. There we go. My name is Bill Gorley, and I teach at Goleta Valley Junior High School. I teach industrial technology for seventh graders, for eighth graders, and I also teach a video productions class. All three of these classes are really exciting in my opinion, and I think your um, son or daughter would really love to take any of those three classes. I'll start first with video productions. Video productions is a class that students take, and they are uh, normally, when there wouldn't be the uh, quarantine, the students would get to um, create a morning broadcast that goes out to the entire school that's done every day and the students get to work together in production, lighting, editing, filming, news stories and they get to so they get to put together the morning news show and the students also have independent projects that they get to work on as well. So they are challenged and tasked with uh, creating stories and compelling news. Seventh grade industrial technology is a class that I teach along with Mr. Moore. In this class, students get to explore different types of technologies. They learn about the uh, process of building things and making things, how they're made. They also get to work um, at individual stations with or without a partner and each station will last for five days. Some of the stations we have offered are stations such as working with plastics or learning about metal or casting. The class has a machine shop in the back of the room and the students learn how to use basic power tools and basic hand tools. Safety is strongly emphasized. I also teach eighth grade industrial technology. In this class, students get to do a lot of hands-on building with metal, with wood. They get to make projects such as skateboards. They get to do projects as chess, like chess boards. They get to do um, work with metal, making dust pans and a barbecue. Uh, they can do a lot of different projects on their own and together. Safety is greatly emphasized, as is the knowledge and usage of tools, both hand and power. And they get to do a whole lot of work within the shop making things. It's a really fun class. I think your son or daughter is gonna love Goleta Valley Junior High School. It is a superb school with great staff, students, teachers, amazing place to be. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Gorley. And uh, next we'll go to Mr. Moore. Hello again. Uh, uh, there we also have a year long program in coding and computer science, I like to call it because it's more than just coding. And I must say as a little side note, I work with Mr. Gorley uh, and I love that class. And my, both my kids, their favorite class was Woodshop with Mr. Gorley. <laughs> but as far as coding goes, uh, I really appreciate all the the, lang the our language department talks about how it's so important to have uh, multiple languages and coding is also a universal language. If you look at a global language, coding, learning how to program a computer is one of those. Um, it turns out if you look at, you know, we all are coming in contact with computer, computerized devices every day. We take it for granted, 
but the people that know how to code one of these things is so rare in our society. Uh, globally, one third of 1% of the population knows how to program and your student can be one of those. And I'm so excited to be um, in charge of this program and um, kids can be so creative with uh, coding. Um, we do, uh, it's, an, it's an eighth and seventh grade elective course. There's no prior experience needed. Um, what's being taught here is fundamental computer science skills. Um, we learn about hardware, we take apart computers, we put them back together. We learn about what makes them tick. Um, then we learn about how to solve problems because that's what computers were ultimately designed to do, to alleviate uh, the mental drudgery that we used to have to do. Uh, that's what computers are doing for us, um, leveraging our brain power. Uh, we do, we start off with a really challenging and awesome creative task, an artistic task, website design. Every student learns how to program their own website with pure code. It's awesome and so rewarding and so inspiring to see that. Then we move into JavaScript. Currently, we're working with animation and game design. Uh, later on, we work with app development, developing apps for phones and mobile devices. We touch on some scratch coding. And then we end up um, with one of my favorite units is kind of an intro to robotics. We learn how to program uh, microcontrollers, uh, Arduinos and Raspberry Pi, little electronic devices that uh, can be turned into so many creative things. Um, and we often, we intertwine the role of computers in society uh, throughout the course, because there are so many positive things that computers provide us, but there's also a lot of societal uh, issues that we examine as well. So uh, I encourage you to check it out. We're looking forward to having your son or daughter join us in coding. Great. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Moore. And thank you to you all for joining us here today. Um, we love GV. We are the Mariners. We love sailing to success. And we are here to welcome and help your kiddos navigate this world, whether it's distance, whether it's hybrid. And my hope is to come back in the fall, back in person. So with that, I will stop sharing. And everybody, let's do our jazz hands and say our goodbyes. Thank you again for joining us, everyone.